Well, since I picked up this uh, Browning 170, this is the Browning Mobile uh, version of the 180. Little, you know, 50 100 watt amplifier using two small Baldy tubes, 6JG6 and family um, tubes in it. Just a little two tuber um, grounded grid amplifier, you know, made by Browning. Um, I believe they made these back in 1970. At least that's when they started making these guys. Um, and I just picked up this little DC um, 170 version here and recapped it. And just going through the uh, Browning lineup, this is uh, another 170 DC I had with its uh, covers on. And then this one I got the covers off showing the insides, a little amp horn they call it here. Little small DC transformers got the switching transistors in the back that buzz when you key it down. I got it keyed down now. It doesn't buzz very loud, but then again, this is a little low powered amp. It's doing a 50 watt dead key there on the big dummy load. Um, 1.7 input SWR on it. And that's 3 watts going in, 3.15 going into it. Um, just under 50 watts out of it on average. Audio. Audio. Barely swinging when you talk. Whistles to about 75. And we got to put it on peak. Audio. 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 Hanging around 100 peak. If I tuned it for peak, um, it would hit about one and a quarter. And that's about the most this thing would do. It's about 100 and a hundred and a quarter peak watts on it um, um, very basic amp no preamp no nothing you just basically have um, even though it's not marked on that one I guess it rubbed off tune and load just like a normal um, tube amp and uh, you got the uh, power on light and the RF output light that lights up and the more uh, power you uh, get out of it the brighter that light so you can actually if you don't have a watt meter, you can tune that for the uh, brightest light. And with these mobile amps, a lot of them, they don't have knobs. You use a screwdriver because the idea is to put it in a trunk or somewhere and, you know, tune it once and forget about it. You're not going to be like at a base where you're going to be messing with the tune and load all the time. So that's the DC-170. Um, that's the uh, Mark 100 which has the bigger lights and the uh, switches are you know different than the rest of the Brownings it more matches the earlier Brownings the R27 S23 and and family um, so then when the Mark uh, 2's and such came out they just changed the cosmetics to it they changed the lights to match the newer radios and they changed the knob and um, but basically the same amplifier and then when the mark three came out they just cosmetically changed it again uh, to just match the um, mark three amplifier so basically these are the same amp if you look at them um, they look very similar because um, except for cosmetics and some very minor electronic changes um, they're the same amp um, and basically that's the same too except it's the um, DC version runs off a, a car 13.8 DC on it um, and these were um, sold back when business band was legal back then uh, in the 70 and you know you got it right there business radio telephone amplifier and I think legally I think the business and well these amps ran from I think 16 to 30 megahertz and no band switch that's a single uh, mono band amplifier and that's basically the Browning bass amp lineup except for the very rare uh, Browning 500 and over here I don't know if you can make it out with the camera but this is uh, the download of the schematics from CB Tricks. And the only reason I'm showing this is I wanted to show what a grounded grid amplifier is. And uh, the, this is the Browning 180 um, schematic. 
and the 170 would be the same thing that just a DC version but anyway a tube has a diode has two grids the cathode here or the ground and the plate up here and since it has only two grids and no control grid um, a diode can only be used at a diode tube can only be used as a diode a two grid tube now you have these um, three dotted line grids in between the cathode and the plate and since this has the one cathode and then three um, regular grids and then the plate it's got a total of five grids you can count them one two three four five so this would be a pentode tube um, but anyway if a tube has just three grids it would be a triode you know if it just had the cathode one grid and in the plate it would be a triode if it had two grids it'd be a tetrode and it's got the um the third grid here it would be a pentode but anyway when I mentioned grounded grid you can see all three of these grids both the tubes go straight straight to ground here that's a ground sim symbol they are directly grounded that's grounded grid so the cathode here on this this one is a true grounded grid too the drive comes in that's the input tuner there the drive comes in and they run it with the cathode so the cathode is um, grounded for DC and it's not grounded for RF with RF is a funny animal there are ways to do that but anyway that's a grounded grid amplifier and with these grids grounded like it is on this one it's not going to be a swinging machine now when I talk about a tetrode amplifier or pinto but we use tetro just to keep it simple um, they unground the grids and they usually put the input on that first dotted line grid and then they use the grid above it they put voltage on it to turbocharge it so you got the input going here, you got the ground underneath, then you got the turbo charge, you got voltage here, it's just amplifying and helping and turbocharging that um, output coming up so you'll have a lot more gain with if you use the same tube in tetro mode versus grounded get grid mode. Um, the advantages of um, tetro mode or tur turbocharging it is you get more swing and it takes a lot less dry because you got that turbo uh, mode helping it the disadvantage of it is you need more voltages now because this one they're grounded you don't need to put any voltage on that so you're gonna have to run you know two three hundred volts on that turbo chargers to get that turbo going and then usually because that turbocharger is, you know, uh, uh, pushing that tube a lot harder, you need to run some negative bias in there, either on that first grid or the cathode to tame it down. So you're going to have to run negative bias and the turbocharger voltages. And with all that gain, um, that's a lot trickier and a lot glitchier. And if something go wrong, uh, cancel Christmas with these grounded grids since everything is grounded it takes a lot more to drive it it's a lot tamer not going to swing as much a um, lot simpler to make and that's why most people make them they're simpler they're easier probably more dependable um, and they take take a beating more than a turbo charge so again you know uh, 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 it's a matter of what you want you want the nice dependable you know grounded grid you know more dry but safe uh, not a lot of swing you know cleaner but if you turbocharge it you get that swing you get that audio uh, but you pay the cost it's trickier it's glitchier and it's not going to take any abuse so anyway that's my thoughts on um, grounded grid versus 
versus Tetro. Alright, that's going to be it for this one. Bye.